we shall commence this module by discussing about financial assets. In a market economy, the allocation of economic resources is the result of many private decisions. Prices are the signals operating in the market economy that direct economic resources to their best use. The type of markets in any economy can be divided into number one, the market for products or the product market and secondly, the market for factors of production or the factors market. The market for factors is also the market for financial products or simply the financial markets. To know the concept of financial markets, it is important to understand the meaning of a financial asset. First, let us discuss the definition of financial asset. An asset is any possession that has value in an exchange. It can be categorized as tangible or intangible. Tangible assets are those whose value depends on specific physical properties, for example, buildings, land or machinery. Intangible assets represent legal claims to some future benefit. Financial assets are under the intangible assets for which the value is the claim to future cash. The entity that agrees to pay future cash is the issuer of the financial asset and the owner of the financial asset is the investor. As far as role of financial asset is concerned, the first is to transfer funds from those having surplus funds to one who needs fund to invest in tangible assets. The other function is to transfer funds in such a manner as to reallocate the unavoidable risk linked with the cash flow generated by tangible assets among those seeking and those providing the funds. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the concept of financial markets, understand the use of financial assets and classify different types of financial markets, money market and capital market. Analyze the working of innovative global financial markets. Next, we shall discuss about the financial markets. A financial market is a market where financial assets are traded or exchanged. While the presence of a financial market is not an essential condition for the creation and exchange of a financial asset, in most economies, financial assets are created and then traded in some type of financial market. For example, a spot or cash market is one in which a financial asset trades for immediate delivery. Let us discuss the role of financial markets. Financial markets deliver the following three additional economic functions. Number one, the interaction of buyers and sellers in financial market determine the price of the traded asset or equivalently they determine the required return on a financial asset. As the inducement for firms to obtain funds relies on the required return that investors demand, it is this characteristic of financial markets that indicates how the funds in the economy should be distributed between various financial assets. This is termed the price discovery process. These markets offer a procedure to an investor to sell a financial asset. Because of this characteristic, it is believed that a financial market renders liquidity. 
and striking feature when circumstances either force encourage an investor to sell if there was no liquidity the owner would be forced to hold a debt instrument until it matures and equity instrument until the company is either voluntarily or involuntarily liquidated thirdly financial markets on economic front reduce the cost of transaction there are two cost associated with transacting search cost and information cost search cost represent explicit costs such as money spent to advertise one's intention to sell or purchase a financial asset and implicit cost such as the value of time spent in locating a counter party the existence of some form of organized financial markets reduces such costs information costs are costs linked with assessing the investment merits of a financial asset that is the amount and the likelihood of cash flow expected to be generated in an efficient market prices reflect the aggregate information collection by all market participants in a nutshell financial markets help solve the issues with pricing of financial assets and risk associated with the expected cash flow from a financial asset the working of the above functions of financial markets can be best understood through several types of financial markets there are many way to categorize financial markets one of the ways is by type of financial claim such as debt markets and equity markets another is by the maturity of the claim for example there is a financial market for short term debt instruments called the money market and one for longer maturity financial assets called the capital market now moving on to discuss the classification of financial market the classification of financial market based on term of maturity is money market money market is a market for dealing in monetary assets of short term nature generally less than a year it refers to that segment of the financial market which allows the raising up of short term funds for fulfilling temporary shortages of cash and obligations and the temporary deployment of excess funds for earning returns the major participants of money market are firstly rbi that is reserve bank of india it is india's central banking institution that controls the monetary policy of the indian rupee it was established on 1st april 1935 during the british raj in accordance with the provision of the reserve bank of india act 1934 second is commercial banks a commercial bank is a type of bank that offers services like accepting deposits making business loans and offering basic investment products for example state bank of india indian overseas bank etc the broad objectives of money market are number 1 an equilibrating mechanism for evening out short term surpluses and deficiencies secondly a focal point of rbi intervention for influencing liquidity in the economy and thirdly access to the users of short term funds to meet their needs at reasonable price and cost features of a developed money market are presence of central bank highly organized commercial banking system presence of sub markets integrated structure of money market accessibility of proper credit instruments acceptability and elasticity of funds international attraction uniformity of interest rates stability of prices 
and highly developed industrial system. Tools of money market. First is certificate of deposit. A certificate of deposit is a promissory note issued by a bank. It is a time deposit that limits holders from drawing funds on demand. Although it is still possible to withdraw the money, this action will incur a penalty. For example, let us say that you purchase a 10,000 CD with an interest rate of 5% compounded annually and a term of one year. At year's end, the CD will have grown to 10,500. Next is repurchase agreements. These are short term loans normally for less than two weeks and regularly for one day arranged by selling securities to an investor with an agreement to repurchase them at a fixed price on a fixed date. Next is commercial paper. It is a short term usage promissory note issued by a company at discount to face value and redeemed at face value. Next instrument is treasury bills. These are the short term debt instruments of a national government that are issued to mature in 3 to 12 months. Next is call market. A type of market in which each transaction takes place at predetermined intervals and where all the bid and ask orders are aggregated and transacted at once. The exchange regulates the market clearing price based on the number of bid and ask orders. A core market is differentiated to an auction market where orders are filled as soon as a buyer or seller is found for any given order at an agreed upon price. The importance of money market is in financing industry, financing trade, self-sufficiency of banks, effective implementation of monetary policy, encouragement to economic growth, helping the government and in proper distribution of resources. Next is capital market. It is a market for long-term funds. Its focus is on financing of fixed investment in contrast to money market which is the institutional source of working capital finance. The participants of capital market are number one mutual funds, an open ended fund functioned by an investment company which raises money from shareholders and invests in a group of assets in accordance with a stated set of objectives. Second is insurance companies, a company that provides insurance policies to the public either by selling directly to an individual or via another source such as an employer's benefit plan. An insurance company is generally comprised of multiple insurance agents. An insurance company can specialize in one type of insurance such as life insurance, health insurance or auto insurance or offer multiple types of insurance. Third is foreign institutional investors. A hedge fund, pension fund manager, mutual fund, bank, insurance company, large corporate buyer or a representative agent for any of these parties that is registered to do business in a country other than where the investment instrument is being purchased. The investor takes position in foreign financial markets on behalf of the institution in the whole country. Next is corporates and individuals. The financial instruments traded in the capital market are number one equity instruments, an instrument that signifies an ownership position called equity in a corporation and signifies a claim on its proportional share in the corporation's assets and profits. 
Ownership in the company is determined by the number of shares a person owns divided by the total number of shares outstanding. For example, if a company has 1000 shares of stock outstanding and a person owns 50 of them, then he owns 5% of the company. Next is foreign exchange instruments. Any financial instrument that locks in a future foreign exchange rate. These can be used by currency or forex traders as well as large multinational corporations. The latter frequently uses these products when they presume to receive large sums of money in the future but want to hedge their exposure to currency exchange risk. Financial instruments that are part of this group comprise currency options contracts, currency swaps and forward contracts and futures contracts. Next is hybrid instruments. An investment product that merges the attributes of an equity security with the debt security. Generally, these instruments are considered as debt type instruments with exposure to the equities market. The examples of these instruments are convertible bonds, preferred stocks, equity default swaps and structured notes linked to an equity index. Now let us discuss the nature of capital markets. It has two segments. It transacts in long term securities. It accomplishes trade off function. It generates dispersion in business ownership, it benefits capital formation and it helps in creating liquidity. The two components of capital market are primary market and secondary market. Primary market is also known as new issue market or NIM. The NIM deals in new securities that is securities which were not formerly accessible and are offered to the investors for the first time. Capital formation take place in the NIM as it delivers additional funds to the corporates directly. It does not have any organizational setup located in any particular place and is recognized only by the specialist institutional services that it tenders to the lenders or borrowers of capital funds at the time of any particular operation. It performs triple service namely number one origination that is investigation and analysis and processing of new issue proposals. Secondly, underwriting in terms of guarantee which states that the issue would be sold regardless of public response and thirdly, distribution of securities to the investors. Methods for raising capital in the primary market are number one, public issue, issue of stock on a public market rather than being privately funded by the company's owned promoters which may not be enough capital for the business to start up, produce or continue running. By issuing stock publicly, this allows the public to own a part of the company though not be a controlling factor. Second is private placement the sale of securities directly to an institutional advisor like a bank, mutual fund, insurance company or foundation does not need SEC registration as long as the securities are brought for investment purposes, investment purposes instead of resale as stated in the investment letter. Third is right issue. An issue of rights to a company's existing shareholders which enables them to buy additional shares directly from the company in proportion to the existing holdings 
within a fixed time period. Fourth is electronic initial public offer. It is the first sale of stock to the public by a company. Companies proposing an IPO are the time new young companies or maybe companies which have been around for many years but have lastly decided to go public. IPOs are often risky investments but often have the potential for noteworthy gains. IPOs are also used as a way for a young company to gain required market capital. Now let us discuss secondary stock market exchange also known as SE. The SE is a market for old or existing securities that is those already issued and granted SE quotation. It plays only an indirect role in industrial financing by providing liquidity to investments already made. It has a physical existence and is located in a particular geographical area. Vital functions performed by SE are number one, nexus between savings and investment. Secondly, liquidity to investors by offering a place of transaction in securities. And thirdly, continuous price formation. Another type of classification for financial markets is based on the types of assets. Let's discuss the issue of debt versus equity. The claim that the holder of a financial asset has may be either a fixed amount or varying or residual amount. In the earlier case, the financial asset is stated as a debt instrument while the latter is stated as equity. For example, common stock is equity. Some securities fall into both categories. Example is preferred stock. Let us look into the market participants. Participants in national financial market and global financial markets are different. The national participants as discussed are unique to money and capital market. In a global financial market, participants that issue and purchase financial claims include households, business entities, including corporations and partnerships, national government, national government agencies, state and local governments and supranationals such as the World Bank, the European Investment Bank and the Asian Development Bank. Let us understand the globalization of financial markets. From the viewpoint of a given country, financial markets can be classified as number one, internal or national market, which includes domestic market where issuers domiciled in a country issue securities and where these securities are consequently traded and foreign market where securities of issuers not domiciles in the country are sold and traded. Second is the external or international market. This market permits trading of securities with two different features. First, at issuance, securities are offered simultaneously to investors in a number of countries and second, they are issued outside the jurisdiction of a single country. Thus, it is denoted as the offshore market or the euro market. Now, we will summarize what we have discussed in this module. A financial asset entitles the owner to future cash flows to be paid by the issuer as well as to the liquidation value of the asset. Financial markets offer the following three services. First, the price discovery for financial assets. Second, liquidity. And third, reduction in the transaction costs of financial markets. There are various ways to categorize financial markets. For example, money versus capital market debt versus equity market, primary versus secondary market, and cash versus derivative market. The increased integration of financial markets throughout the world can be credited to three factors. First, deregulation or liberalization of major financial markets. Second, 
advances in telecommunications and computer technologies and third institutionalization of financial markets based on above factors global financial markets can be categorized as national and external markets